When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. In John's Gospel, it's the only Gospel that tells us that Jesus was in a garden when he was arrested. And if a man in a garden facing temptation sounds familiar, it should. The story of Adam starts in the garden, but Adam listened to Satan and did what Satan said, and he did not do what God said. So Adam's failure to listen to God meant that there was a need for a second Adam in Jesus. Paul called Jesus the second Adam, and he came, and he faced temptation, just like the first Adam. When Jesus was facing his first temptation in the desert, in the Gospel of Luke, it says that Satan left him until, quote, an opportune time. So did Satan, I wonder, realize or think that the Garden of Gethsemane was an opportune time? And did he tempt Jesus with lies like, did God really say you have to die? Or will the disciples really be okay? But Jesus, through God's strength and by obeying God's will, was able to overcome the lies of Satan. And he did not fail to listen to God, but he did do God's will. And through him, we have power and strength to do the same. So I'd like to share with you a prayer by John Wesley about following the will of God. Pray with me. God, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. Amen. <music>